is already all, so we'll be good to go. Okay, guys, you got me? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, Coach, okay. we'll just go ahead and uh, open it up to you. Okay. Um, well, I know we, you know, we talk about things, uh, obviously, coming up the weekend, we talked uh, Saturday, uh, really, really disappointed um, in not being able to get uh, what would have been uh, a huge win for our program uh, and would have been a second straight win in American Athletic Conference play. Um, so, you know, disappointed that not be able to not be able to close that one out. Um, you know, Navy, you know, that's a, that's a program that's, uh, you know, won at a high level for many years and and certainly, they know they, they have great experience late in, late in those games like that, and that, and that showed. So, um, the kids, you know, come out of it. Uh, you know, I think a, a combination of you know disappointed not getting the win, but also still, um, you know, confident in their progress and uh, seeing themselves playing better and better each week, uh, which is only going to help us moving forward uh, and very motivated. Um, you know, going into this week, uh, we all wish we had a game this week. You know, it's sometimes you say, you know, boy, we, we really needed that bye week. Um, you know, this is one of those weeks where we all wish we were playing just because of the momentum you have right now and, uh, you know, just keeping keeping that rolling. But I do think there's some benefits to having the bye right now uh, going into the game against Tulsa next week. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're able to use those, uh, you know, those benefits and, uh, and make the most of this opportunity. <clears throat> Okay, we'll open up the questions for Coach Houston. Coach, when you kind of look at this season, you're almost really at the halfway point. What have you been most pleased with? What do you want to see your team improve on the most in the second half? I think most pleased with, uh, I think, is just um, positive growth. And, and I say that there's so many levels where you talk about that. You know, it's um, you have so many new players to the program. You have so many freshmen. Uh, and, and then, you know, you combine those guys with the returners that we have and, you know, you didn't have the spring and summer. And so you had a lot of just, you know, gelling, you know, all these individuals together and then getting them schematically on the same page and gelling them as an offense, a defense, a special teams units, uh, and as a program. So I think just positive growth in all areas, whether it be on the field, um, off the field individually, physically, off the field uh, collectively as, as far as culture goes, you know, locker room dynamics. I think just positive growth is what we've seen a lot of. And that positive growth has been reflected in, you know, our play and, and our confidence on the field. So I think that's the thing I'm most pleased with. Um, you know, the things, the things that I, I want to see us do, you know, in the second half of the season, you know, I think the most obvious is I want to see us, win those games, you know, like that game this past Saturday, you know, like the Cincinnati and SMU game last year. You know, I want to see us continue to compete at a high level and, and learn how to close out those games against quality opponents. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of individual things, you know, whether it's, you know, within specific position groups or position or, or specific units where you want to also see some, some things improve, and we spent a lot of time in the last two days as a staff talking about those things. But um, you know, the, the the big thing is just you know getting over that hump, which we you know we feel like we're right there. <clears throat> Can you talk about the uh, the progress of both your offense and defensive lines? That was a point of emphasis coming into this season. They both seem to be improving at the moment. Right. I think you know, um, obviously, D line was a huge. Um, need and a, a huge priority in the off season in recruiting and uh, really just, you know, you guys have seen a handful of those guys on the field playing right now. You know, there's another four or five that aren't playing right now that uh, I am really, really excited about as well. So uh, I, I think just, you know, that group right there and then the job that uh, Roy Tesh and Byron Thweet are doing with them, um, really excited about that and their progress. And I think that, uh, you know, it's a group that's, you know, it, it's, it's going to be here for a long time. So it's, you know, it, that's really going to solidify us defensively up front uh, for the foreseeable future. And uh, a lot of competition, a lot of depth, a lot of ability. So, uh, you know, really excited about that group. Can't wait to work with them, you know, today. Can't wait to work with them for 
you know, the next couple of years. So um, offensive line wise, I think, you know, given some of the challenges we had uh, with some injuries uh, early in preseason camp and guys just not available, um, you know, it's, it's challenged us. Uh, and, and I think that was, you know, some of the issues that you saw at Georgia State. Uh, but I really am excited about, you know, that group, the way they've kind of meshed over the last three weeks. You've had the same starting lineup for the last um, three games for the most part and the same guys rotating in and out. And I think, you know, really excited about the way that group has responded week in and week out and improved drastically. I think that shows a lot of dedication on their, their part. I think it's a great job of Coach Shankweiler. Uh, you know, bring that group along. Uh, I think you see the young guys like Nashad Strother, Avery Jones, you know, just really Trent Holler, you know, really, you know, you see their development coming along. You see the, you know, the strong leadership from a Fernando Fry, the, you know, the determination to, to, to play at a high level from Sean Bailey, um, you know, Bailey Malovic, uh, you know, his energy and enthusiasm. I just think there's so many positive things right there in that group. Uh, that's happening right now that's, you know, causing them to, you know, be able to play better and better each week. Coach, what do you make of the testing process and protocols Nick Saban was able to go through versus what your players were able to go through last week? I think each each conference um, kind of has, has spent a lot of time developing their protocols. I know that this has been something that the the physicians uh, and administrators in the American Athletic Conference spent uh, a great amount of time during the off season coming up with testing procedures, uh, protocols, contact tracing procedures, all those things uh, that, uh, you know, that we go through each week. You know, we tested yesterday. We're testing again tomorrow. It's, it's part of our daily life right now. Uh, I think that, you know, those protocols are giving us the opportunity to play. Um, have there been some frustrating things as a result of the testing and protocols, absolutely. Um, but you know, that's those are things that that I can't control. Uh, there's some things in there that nobody can, can control, and I think that uh, you have to you have to respect the the protocols. You have to respect the the people in those positions that they are doing what's best for uh, your your players and your staff to keep everybody as safe as possible while while playing this game. So where does that leave update wise for those players that were not able to play this past weekend? So we have one active positive in the program right now. Uh, and then a, a handful of players that are um, out as a result of contact tracing. Uh, we do expect all of those players to be back with us this weekend. So, you know, within a day or two of each other. So as we go into next week, uh, that group will be uh, rejoining us as long as there's no setbacks as far as testing goes. Hey, Coach, when you look at Rajay Harris, and he's emerged, obviously, these last two weeks in, in a big way, but um, I'm wondering when you were recruiting him, how quickly could you see or could you tell that he brings that kind of physical style and what you want to do long term, you know, with your whole approach to this program? I mean, how good of a fit is he for you long term, you think? Well, I think that, uh, you know, Burns High School, I've recruited ever since I was the coach at Lenore Ryan. So I know that program very, very well. Uh, and I've had uh, a lot of really high-end players from that program at every stop I've been at. Uh, we started recruiting Raji when I was at James Madison. And, uh, you know, that continued on. when We got here uh, at ECU. And, uh, you know, just I thought he was very talented when he was young. Uh, you know, he was, you know, one of the top recruits in our, in our, in our class last year. Uh, and, but really, you know, his senior film, uh, you know, as, as we watched him develop his senior year, you were, you know, you were just, you were, you were hoping you were going to hold on to him. You know, he was committed to us, you know, this time last year, um, you know, a group of our coaches all went down to see him play uh, uh, Gaffney High School in a regular season game. And, you know, I, I was not, you know, permitted to go, but uh, just that film from that performance was one of the most dominating performances by a high school running back that I've seen. And, you know, that was probably the night that you you knew, hey, this this kid is different. You know, he's not just a good player. He's got a chance. And then, you know, you get him here last spring and just you get to know him more in depth as a person. Uh, and you see his character on a daily basis, the way he carries himself, you know, the way he interacts with his teammates, how coachable he is. And you see his competitive drive to be great. 
Uh, and I think that's a credit to his, his father and his family and the way he was raised and his high school coaches and the way he was coached. But uh, I said it, uh, I said it Saturday, um, you know, I think he's, I think he's special. I think he's, he's a guy along with, you know, the other guys we have in that room, Keaton Mitchell is the same, you know, in the same class. You know, I think that that room is, um, you know, in a really good place for the long term uh, with our older players and uh, the two young backs. Coach, going off that uh, with the running backs, Chase Hayden, we didn't see him uh, last game. Can you update us on his status? Uh, Chase uh, came to me the Monday after the South Florida game and informed me that he was opting out uh, for the 2020 season. So um, he is not with us right now. Uh, and then presumably with, with Holton out, you know, the start of this week, how important will it be for Mason to, you know, look at that film, learn everything, and maybe take some more number one reps and, and really continue to grow that way? I think it's critical. You know, it's it's different. You know, Mason's been sitting in those meeting rooms. You know, he and Alex and, and Ryan have been sitting in those meeting rooms watching Holton uh, go out there and play and, and, and do some great things and make some mistakes. And, and you say, you know, learn from somebody else's errors. But, you know, it's not until you're the one out there on the field and now he sees himself, you know, the last two days on film, you know, he sees himself and what he's thinking in his mind versus what, you know, happens on film, you know, that's where you can really you know, have tremendous growth. Uh, and, you know, he, he did not have the opportunity to have spring practice with us. He did not have the opportunity to be with us this summer. So it's been a little bit of an accelerated, uh, you know, development of him, you know, this fall to prepare him to go out there on the field. But, you know, that's his first significant playing time at the college level. Uh, he did a, a ton of great things on Saturday. And I think he showed, you know, all of us, you know, some of his uh, potential and, and why, why he was, we signed him here. Uh, and he also, you know, had some things that he obviously can do a lot better and will do better, uh, you know, in the future. So um, he's a young quarterback. You know, it's uh, we're, we're fortunate to have Holton here uh, who is an experienced quarterback and he's a guy that can, uh, you know, play at a high level. And he's a great guy to, for Mason and Ryan and Alex to be around and learn from for the next couple of years. Coach, Coach this is obviously a tough time. This is obviously a this tough time for um, – for college athletic departments across the country, given John Gilbert's announcement yesterday, what do you make of everything going on right now? It's kind of, it is what it is. Uh, it's not a whole lot of fun. Uh, it's not fun for anyone. Um, but the one thing is, you know, we, we all have to do our part. Um, you know, we're all in this together and certainly, um, you know, there are, you know, there are some people that you really, you worry about uh, because of, you know, uh, how significantly it may impact their, um, you know, daily life and their livelihood. And we try to support those people and, and help them out because, you know, we're all, we're all pirates and, you know, my staff, you know, just speaking for them. And I don't just mean my full-time coaching staff. I mean, support staff, GAs, analysts, admins, you know, all the people that work within the football program. There's a lot of them uh, just trying to ensure that, you know, they are all, you know, able to make it through this, uh, that we can, you know, keep the group together, uh, because, you know, every, everyone's important, but certainly this is a challenging time for, for our program, for our athletic department, for our university. Uh, and it's a challenging time for universities across the country. So everybody's got to kind of, you know, tighten up, uh, you know, pitch in and, and, and find a way to help everybody else through. Coach, can you talk about the way, uh, Chad Stevens played on Saturday? Yeah, you know, I, would, I would say I'm, I'm pleased with how Chad performed on Saturday. It's, you know, he's been a guy that's been in our program for a year now, um, has transitioned from an inside linebacker to that, you know, outside linebacker rush position, uh, has played a little bit, uh, you know, on, uh, on defense in the first few ball games, a lot on special teams, uh, has been getting a lot of reps in practice, but certainly saw um, his first start this past Saturday and his most significant playing time. I thought that, uh, I thought Chad played very hard. They played with great physicality, uh, you know, played, played the way you, you want your players to play. Um, did he make some mistakes that, that uh, you expect from a first time starter? Yeah. 
will he improve from that experience? Yes, I think he's he's very similar to Mason in that uh, you know you got to go through that uh, you got to go through it and, and make those mistakes before you really have uh, tremendous growth. When you look at the defense as a whole, it looked like there wasn't a lot of missed assignments or, you know, blown coverages, you know, that type of thing. It, some of it was just Navy just got yards, got, you know, it, it was physical. I mean, was that a big step in improvement? Um, and obviously if you compare that kind of to last year versus Navy, just guys doing the right thing and kind of being in the right spots. There's no comparison to anything a year ago. I mean, it's, it's night and day from a discipline um, execution standpoint, toughness, physicality, playing hard. Uh, it's night and day. Um, you know, you you had you had a couple of a couple of those fullback runs that you know, you, maybe you had one mistake here, or one mistake there, but there wasn't much. Um, I thought that uh, I thought that the kids did a great job with the game plan that the defensive staff put together. I thought that Blake did a good job calling the game, uh, mixing up. Uh, he did a great job mixing up the read key uh, that the quarterback had on any given play, depending if they were running midline, inside veer, or outside veer. You know, he did a good job mixing up you know, who had quarterback, who had dive, and really messing with uh, uh, the quarterback's decision-making ability. And it resulted in some tackles for loss. It resulted in a turnover uh, on the play by Rick, uh, Rick DeBrayu. And, uh, and I think that, that that execution at that level um, is what gave us a shot in that ball game. Uh, uh, love the way our kids played with phys physicality and energy. And, uh, you know, that's – that's the identity that we want to have on defense. So, uh, you know, very pleased with the way that unit played. Coach, you got a big game coming up next week. Uh, chance for the whole country to kind of see you and, and see this ball club's progression. And uh, it's got to be a great opportunity for you guys. Talk about uh, the team's attitude coming into to this week, how they felt coming out of the game last week, and, and what you hope to accomplish uh, heading into next Friday. Well, yeah, you know, I said when we first got on here, you know, wish wish we were playing them this week, uh, you know, to, just to keep on playing week in and week out. Um, you know, we've already looked at Tulsa a good bit the last couple of days. Um, you know, they look uh, they look like I thought they would coming into this year based on seeing them at the end of the year last year. Uh, I think they're as talented as anyone in the league. Uh, obviously, they have tremendous size on both fronts uh, and at the skill positions. Um, and, I, you know, they – for all intents and purposes, probably should have beaten Oklahoma State in the opener. Uh, had some turnovers there in the red zone and didn't didn't score a couple of times, and I think lost sixteen to seven or something like that. Um, you know, you know, stuck it on UCF the week after UCF uh, beat us. So uh, I think those two games tell you the level of play that uh, you know they're capable of. They'll have South Florida this Friday night, so look forward to seeing that game. That'll be a good uh, you know good comparison for us also. Uh, but, uh, you know, this week, you know, we're focusing on a combination of, you know, getting ready for Tulsa. We're going to spend uh, a certain portion of practice each day uh, repping, you know, our stuff against Tulsa and what we expect. Uh, but we're also going to spend a lot of time, you know, with just us, you know, good on good. We're going to spend a lot of time with some of the, some of the young guys that maybe you have not seen yet, uh, trying to bring them farther along. Is there anybody that's maybe ready to, to step in and play here in the second half of the season? Uh, continue to get those young players that are playing some experience. Um, you know, some guys have some bumps and bruises. You know, we're going to try to take care of this week, make sure they're fresh going into next week. So I think this week is a, a great opportunity for us to, uh, you know, really, you know, go into next week strong and, and well prepared and, uh, and look forward to playing uh, next Friday night in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Coach, you get the national TV for that Tulsa game, but it's also 9 Eastern kickoff. What do you think of that kickoff time? And do you do anything preparation wise with your players to lead up to such a late kick? Well, I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be a late one. I don't know if anybody, my wife won't, she'll never make it uh, till midnight to see the end of that game. So we'll have to make sure we tape that. She'll watch it the next morning, but um, you know, it's, we're going to start preparation Saturday since it's a Friday game where we're, you know, we'll bump everything back a day. So, you know, Saturday is Sunday, Sunday's Monday, that kind of deal. Um, you know, probably bump meetings and dinner uh, on Thursday and some of our travel plans on Thursday a little bit late uh, compared to what we usually do. Uh, maybe not quite get in bed as early on Thursday night, uh, but make sure Wednesday night and Thursday night we get a significant amount of sleep. Uh, and that way, you know, we're, we're well rested on game day. 
And I think, uh, you know, handling a little bit later start on Friday morning for our team with a typical game day uh, routine, uh, you know, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll mesh up uh, well with a nine o'clock kick. Coach, you mentioned uh, Rick DeBrayu earlier. He was a guy y'all signed late in your first class. Can you just talk about his growth and, uh, you know, he's really making some impact plays up front. You know, Rick's a, Rick's a kid that I recruited since he was probably a sophomore in high school and, and, and knew very, very well. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he, he's, a, he's a player that, uh, you know, I recruited heavily when I took the job here, uh, you know, to get him here to East Carolina University. And um, I, I, I thought then and I think now that, you know, he's, he's got a chance to be a really high-impact player on the field. He's got a chance to be a real strong uh, culture uh, guy in the locker room. Um, you know, he's one that, you know, I, I feel like I have a, a very strong personal relationship with him. And, and I think those always help, uh, you know, as you, as you go through these uh, you know, early years of a, of a player's development. Um, but I think he's got a chance to be special. And, uh, you know, he's going to continue to grow. He's not going to get any smaller. Uh, he is extremely explosive for a big kid. Um, and he, he has twitch, which that, you saw that interiorly Saturday, just his ability to to, you know, impact the, the quarterback fullback run game uh, so dynamically there in the, in the interior of the defensive line. Uh, you know, I think he's going to continue to improve. Okay, are there any other questions for Coach Houston? Okay, Coach, thank you for your time. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good week. Okay. I'll see you going into next week. Thanks, Coach.